This week on Win Today. The degree to which we're willing to embrace the pain of recovery is the degree to which we will thrive in life. We have this false sense of security and that's why it takes sometimes a major disruption to start catapulting us into our destiny. It's our limiting beliefs that ultimately keep us from becoming the best we're capable of becoming. Something's got to change, but that change has to happen first on the inside. I don't want to wake up in five years and say, how did I end up here? It's time to get unstuck. It's time to get your why back. It's never too late. Let's start today. Helping you design your roadmap to wholeness from the inside out. This is Win Today. And now, here's your host, Christopher Cook. Welcome to the show, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for the download. This is episode 93. This is Win Today, your roadmap to wholeness from the inside out. Guys, we've got a great show today. We're talking about a subject that is so personal to me. That's fear. That's dealing with the unexpected situations of life. Here's some stats. 60% of people fear things that will never actually take place. 30% of people fear things that cannot be changed. And 88% of people fear having to face a health crisis at some point in life. And to be honest, I think I've been a member of each one of those groups at many points of my life. And you probably have too, right? So how do we deal? How do we move through the unexpected circumstances of life without being paralyzed by fear itself? How do we resolve unmet expectations for life? Man, I just dealt with that last week and it ruined probably two or three days of my life because I had my heart set on something. I had invested time and energy and resources and guess what? It fell flat on its face. So I was disappointed. What do you do in circumstances like that? Well, today we're gonna answer those questions and more with my guest. She needs little introduction. Her name, Christine Kane. Guys, she's the author of the brand new book, Unexpected, and today, here's our target. Successfully navigating through the unexpected, unpredictable moments of life without falling apart. That's my desire. Hey, I leaned into this conversation so hard, I needed it. I really did. You're going to hear it. But guys, before we get going today, I want to take another step forward to adding value to your life, to helping you more. So I have a call-in number that's available for you right now. Here's the number, 248-266-2945. That's 248-266-2945. I want to answer your specific questions about emotional health, relationships, getting past the past, personal growth goals, getting unstuck, putting a plan on your dreams and everything in between. Listen, guys, if you have a question, someone else listening probably has the same question. So why not tackle this thing together? Here's the deal. Leave a message. I'll air your question on the show and I'm going to bring clarity to whatever you are facing. And stay tuned, guys. Right after my conversation with Christine Kane, co-author of Boundaries and Relationships, Dr. John Townsend is here once again with this week's Mentoring Minute. But guys, right now, let's get right to it. My conversation with Christine Kane. Christine, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here today. Chris, it's my honor. We've got two Chris's on. That's awesome. <laughs> you know we're bound for success Come with on. that. It's so good. Well, Christine, you're no stranger to having to deal with unexpected situations in your life. And obviously, what a lot of people see is favor and success. But behind the scenes, there's a story. So I'd love to know what was going on in your life that led to writing this book? Well, I, there's so many things, but I think that uh, the big catalyst, uh, Chris, was um, a few years ago I got a diagnosis that I think obviously really uh, connects with a lot of people when um, I woke up one morning and I had a gro- – I, I could literally feel on the inside of my throat um, a, a, something hanging on the left-hand side of my throat and a lump on the right-hand side. And, um, you know, I had a biopsy, laryngoscopy, just everything kind of done in a 48 hour period. And I got on a plane from Los Angeles to Australia. You kind of lose that day. I got on the plane on Wednesday night, arrived on Friday morning and Mm -hmm. an hour later got the phone call from my doctor that sort of had those words that no one wants to hear, you know, Chris, you have cancer. And, um, it was certainly what I wasn't expecting and the cancer at, at, when it, Um, first showed up was between my trachea and my larynx so right on my voice box and you know I 
uh, speak for a living. And so if um, fear was going to try to grip me anywhere, it would have been in that moment. Um, um, you know, my father had died of cancer when I was uh, 19. So that was 30 years before. And so here I was um, in the midst of, you know, this moment where I, I what was I going to choose? Was I going to choose to be paralyzed and crippled by fear or step up and into uh, faith? You know, and I think that was the huge challenge. Mm. And that challenge to move into faith beyond fear is, is really what we're talking about today, folks. And Christine, what I love about your book and it's, I'd say, the hard reality about what you identified in the book is you use two words that I think are so fitting to all of us when we face unexpected pain, and they're this, whiplashed and immobilized. And for some people, anger and rage is their default. But for me, Christine, I shut down, and it's because of fear. It, it happened to me last week, and it's like those cold, lonely tears are so painful. I'd love for you to talk about fear in your own life, and then Christine, how in the world do we begin to take steps to grab it at the roots in our lives? Well, I, I think it's great because fear hits in so many different ways. And I think yeah. even in the book, I, I talk about so many different things, whether it's the betrayal of a friend or um, friends of mine that wanted to be married and they're in their late 30s and no marriage and not married yet or were wanting to have babies and, you know, had seven miscarriages and, and, and will never be able to bear a biological child. And I mean, it just, a lot of us fear a whole lot. I think if you just look at what's happening in the world, whether it's economic, environmental, political, moral, social, there's so yeah. much chaos and divisiveness that yeah. fear tries to grip us on every side. So I think there uh, comes a time where you go, okay, in my case, I, I say out loud that God has not given me a spirit of fear, yeah. but a love, power, and a sound mind. Therefore, um, if God hasn't given it, then I know where the origin of it is, and it's the antithesis of God. And if God has given me love, power, and a sound mind, it would mean the antithesis of those things, which would be a tormented mind or mm -hmm. um, hatred and a weakness that um, basically I don't want to cower and pull back in those things. And I think sometimes you've got to feel the fear and do it anyway. And don't confuse your feelings um, with reality. Like sometimes I can feel something. So the feelings are real. Yes. But, uh, but it does doesn't mean that that needs to paralyze me because although those feelings internally are real, externally, the circumstances do not need to take me out. And the enemy ultimately is just after our faith. That's, I mean, he doesn't want our stuff. He doesn't need a car. He doesn't drive a car. He doesn't live in a house. He just wants our faith. And so if we um, are paralyzed and crippled, we won't activate our faith and then move forward uh, to the other side of any challenge that we're confronting. And so uh, there comes a time where, you know, I come from a background of abuse, Chris, and abandonment, yeah. adoption. So there was a lot of shame and fear and guilt and insecurity. And we all live in a fallen world. So there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of challenges. Uh, somehow people think that in order to win or to be successful, that you're exempt from challenge and pain and obstacles and hurdles. But the fact is that those circumstances build your faith muscle and build your courage and build your tenacity so that you can soar above the circumstances that are trying to drown you and you don't have to be a victim to what happens to you but you can make what Jesus did for you bigger than what anyone has said to you about you or done to you mm -hmm. and I think in my life um, I had to make a decision that yes there are things I feel the fear, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so when I think of a background of abuse and abandonment and adoption, and today Nick and I run a global anti-trafficking organization, 15 offices in 13 countries. Well, my past is now able to give someone a future and the very things that tried to destroy my life can now be used to help give somebody else hope and life and future. So I think that we've all got to make a decision and um, that I am going to be fueled by the strength of God, the courage of God. He's going to help me be able to do things I cannot do. And I'm just going to take a step of faith. If you're not willing to take a risk, I've, so many of us live under this false assumption that we can control our life, that safety is the goal of life, but you are never going to wow. do what you're called to do on this earth if you look for safety um, and control because the truth is that we're not going to get that this side of eternity and if you in order to have any measure of success in any area of life you're going to have to take risks and risks means that you're going to have to trust that God is in you uh, God is with you 
despite the circumstances that are trying to drown you. And I think when you learn to find God in the midst of the storms, then you're, you know that he's going to be your shelter in the middle of it because to get to the other side, there is always going to be challenges. There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be hurdles. And if you're waiting for the perfect moment when all the planets align and there's no heartache and there's no challenge and there's no obstacle, then you are never going to do anything of significance, I think, this side of eternity. My word. Christine, I, I'm just you know thinking about what you just said. Do you think there are a lot of people in this world who are just living atrophied from the inside out and the purpose of God on their life is so much bigger than what they're living, but they're living this atrophied life. What, what do you think about that as you travel and speak and, you know, hope, hope yeah, to I, help people get unstuck, you know? Yeah, I think I totally agree. And people um, often get stuck in, in a moment of disappointment or disillusionment or pain or suffering, and they've allowed one season, one chapter, one failure, one mistake, one event in their life to define their whole life. But there comes a point where you've got to make what Jesus did for you bigger than what they did to you oh. or bigger than what they said about you. And so, yes, I was abused for 12 years, but I'm now 51 years old. So, you know what? I have not been being abused for 40 years. So I've not been being abused for a lot longer than I was abused. So I'm not going to allow one quarter of a season of my life to define my entire life. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of us allow that moment. We get stuck in that moment and never move beyond it. But Jesus came to give us uh, not only forgiveness for our past, but a brand new life today. It means that my history doesn't have to define my destiny. Come Jesus on. didn't come just to be fire insurance for when I die. He came to give me a brand new life here on earth today. He makes all things new. And he redeems us. And so I think what a lot of us do, I said to my doctor, this might help answer this, Chris. Um, sure. I said to the doctor, when she gave me the cancer diagnosis and she said, Chris, you've got cancer. I said to her, Leslie, this is going to go one of three ways. And I said, I'm going to win no matter which way it goes. I said, plan A, I'm going to be miraculously healed. I'm going to come back to America. You're going to do a scan and go, hey, it's gone. Well, that didn't happen, but it doesn't stop me from believing that God can still do that today. Yeah. Plan B um, you know, the doctors are going to be able to isolate this and uh, through surgery and medication, I'm going to be healed and praise God. In my case, that's what happened. Or plan C, Jesus is going to take me ha home and heal me there. So plan A, I win. Plan B, I win. Plan C, I win. I can't lose for winning. And so I think a lot of times I said to her, the, the issue isn't about, oh, Christine, you might die. We're all going to die. Just live long enough and we're all going to die. That's, you know, last I checked, the, the only way to that is through death. And so George Bernard Shaw said death is the ultimate yeah. statistic. One out of one will die. So a lot of Christians <laughs> freak out. I'm not going to take any risks. What if I die? Well, honey, live long enough and you will. You shouldn't fear death because that's inevitable. What you should fear is that you never live the life of My purpose gosh. that God has called you to live. And so what that has done is made me go, hey, what? Why don't we expect the unexpected? Why don't we expect that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything we could ever ask, hope, or think? Why don't we expect that our God is good and he does good? And yes, life sometimes sucks, but yeah. that doesn't mean God does. And so where is the grace of God? Jesus didn't say if tribulation comes. He says when trials come. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So if we stop looking for this safe, predictable uh kind of Christianity that just goes, I, I can control my life and I'm going to be exempt from pain and go, you know what? Sometimes, yep, I'm going to get a cut. I'm going to get a stab. I'm going to get a wound. It's going to hurt. And I talk about this in the book. I, I'm not sugarcoating anything. No, right. Faith is not denial. But faith is saying, you know what, it, despite everything, Jesus is still with me. Despite everything, nothing can thwart the plan and purpose of God for my life. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the enemy wants my faith. I'm not giving it to him. Um, I'm going to trust that even when things are not good, God is still good. Even when I don't understand what goes oh on, God knows what's going on. And my ultimate trust is on him. I don't need, just because the world is going cray cray and Everyone around me is going cray cray does not mean I have to go cray cray because God is still on the throne. I'm sitting here, Christine, and, and there's a giant bullseye on my chest right now because <laughs> you, you just pulled back the arrow and I'm, I'm just getting hit right now because here's the thing. And folks, you know my journey the last 18 years of my life. Here I am, just hit my mid 30s and I'm wondering what happened to time. Early childhood, 
It was wonderful, but there were scary parts. And honestly, because of fear, I held on to life so tightly. I don't like the unexpected today. You know, I looked at the title of your book and I started laughing. I'm like, I love everything she writes. I like everything she does, but I don't want to read this book. And, (laughs) you know, Christine's like, "Ah, the result of this stuck life in my life before major healing a few years ago was a life that was really small and really stuck. But you know what? I didn't give a crap because at least I thought I was safe. And it reminds me of what you write in the book with. That was so good. Um, You talked about a failure to thrive. And many people live safe, tightly wound lives for fear of more pain. I did. Yes. And then we live in fear of greater unexpected circumstances. So what are the consequences of living like this? And then how in the world do we get free? Yeah, and it's a big one. I think most of humanity lives there because we we just don't want to be hurt again. And, um, you know, a life of risk, it's... It sounds fabulous, uh, but it's deeply p- painful. But I see um, embrace. I think the w- the degree to which we're willing to embrace the pain of recovery is the degree to which we are willing to grow and which we will thrive in life. And I think a lot of times we we, we have this false sense of security, and that's why it takes sometimes a major external disruption. Um, to actually start catapulting us into our destiny because I think we all eventually get to the realization I can't control anything. I can't control people. Yeah. I can't control circumstances. I can't control whether a cyclone or an earthquake is going to hit. I can't ultimately, you know, um, yeah. control so many things in life. And sometimes that external disruption is what wakes us up and says, okay, well, I'm going to start trusting God. The whole deal is actually an invitation to trust God more. And I think, um, when you understand that the pain of staying where you are is greater than the pain involved with moving forward, then you're willing, because it's going to hurt either way. Living a small life, it, you're either going to have the pain of regret on the other side of eternity, or you're going to have the pain of change this side of eternity. So you get to choose. <laughs> you get to choose whether you're going to live with, I could have done so much more. Yeah. I could have helped so many more people. My life could have been so much more fruitful. And to me, the pain of obedience outweighs and is one I'm more willing to pay than the pain of regret. I don't think anything could be more painful than the pain of regret. I could have done so much more. Yeah. I could have been so much more fruitful. The pain of unrealized potential, I mean, the cemeteries of the world are full of dead potential, of things that could, people that could have done so much more but live so far beneath their God-given destiny yeah. because mm-hmm. of fear. And 100% it's because of fear, fear of other people's opinions, fear of, you know, external circumstances. And that's why God has gone to great lengths to say, God has not given us a spirit of fear. It's a spirit. And I think sometimes we're blind to the fact that um, it's a spirit of fear that causes us to live so far beneath who God has created us to be. I mean, you and I are created in the image of Almighty God. Yeah. We are filled with God-given destiny, purpose, and potential. And the enemy sends an assignment to still kill and destroy that. You know, in my case, when I was still in my mother's womb, when I was born through abuse, through abandonment, adoption and rejection and um you know the enemy just wants to steal kill and destroy ultimately the purpose of god that's in your life and so fear goes i am just going to stay back here um but i think eventually i mean you know chris what in your life triggered you what made you decide that you didn't want to live small anymore that's such a great question you know christine i got to the place so to give you the backstory my mom was diagnosed with cancer when i was 11 years old and for the next 18 and a half years, we went after it. I believe in laying hands on the sick. We saw incredible miracles. I was like, I was so flipping convinced that there's no way she was going to die from this. Right. Yet, the day before Thanksgiving 2012, she takes her last breath. I wasn't even in the room. And Christina, it's one of the greatest pains of my life still. Uh, my 30th birthday, she didn't know who I was and thought I was 134 years old. And Then I fell into post-traumatic stress and chronic anxiety. And two years after the fact, I'm sitting on my couch. I'm like, I can't live like this anymore. Like, it's exactly what we were talking about. The whole thing about regret. I cannot stay stuck. I don't care if I fall flat on my face. I, I literally don't. Like, I don't give a crap. If I fall flat on my face, at least I stepped out. At least I took a risk. And it was like, it was that kind of 
motivation within me that said, I've got to do something. Like, I just have to change for my sanity. Yes. Yes. Well, there you go. That's, that's the whole thing at some point. I think that's a spirit of God working on the inside of us too that goes, okay, I can't just keep sitting here and neither would it have been your mum's desire uh, to want that to happen. And sometimes I think our own unmet expectations that lead to disappointment um, we transfer that onto God, there and, it is. and I think that's the the big thing. And and so many Christians get stuck at that place of disappointment. And you know, the whole time God's with us. I think I mean we've just come through Easter, but you know, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they were so disappointed that things didn't turn out the way they thought that Jesus was walking with them and they didn't even see him. And I think sometimes in our moments of greatest disappointment, Jesus is right there and we don't see him uh, because all we keep looking at is what we lost or what didn't happen. And yes. I think Jesus is inviting us in the midst of it to go, hey, I'm still here. I promise to never leave you. I promise to never forsake you. I know this didn't turn out how you thought. But it's not the end of the story. It's not the end of your story. And um, one day, the other side of eternity, it's all going to make sense. But keep walking with me. Don't get stuck in this place of disappointment. That's so good what you just said. And I want to stay there because while you're talking, I'm getting all kinds of triggered right now. And I think shame, I think shame, Christine, manifests in self-protection. So I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insulate my heart so well that nothing and no one can can uh, get in, no bad people can get in, no bad circumstances can get in, but at the same time, no good people, no good circumstances can get in. All this pain is real, all the hurt is real, and the grief process is so necessary, but Christine, I think it's important that we just stay here and emphasize this. At what point do we have to answer the question, do we really want to get well? I mean, and like, that's, yes, that is the million dollar question. I, I, I use that story because Jesus said to yeah. them, the man by the pool, 38 years. I mean, you know, Chris, here's the deal. Who or what disappointment is worth nearly four decades of your life? Right. And that's what it comes down to. 38 years of um, lying there blaming. It's not my fault. I had no one to put me in the pool. It's not my fault. Others got there before me. It's not my fault. I was born in the wrong family. It's not my fault. You know, my father died when I was 19. Um, I, he didn't walk me down the aisle. You know, he has never met his grandchildren. I mean, I could go, God, it wasn't meant to end up this way. But who am I to say that it wasn't meant to end up that way? Like, the fact is that God has, I trust that he is good and his grace is sufficient in the midst of my disappointment. And I think, here's what I think. Tell you me know, that. I come from a, 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 a part of the church that um, uh, is highly a faith. I mean, I'm you know, people go, Christine, you're a faith preacher. I go, well, it's better than being a doubt <laughs> preacher. I'd rather be a, a faith preacher than a, you, you're not really insulting me if you're trying to insult me. That's <laughs> yeah. not working. Um, I don't want to be a doubt preacher. But I think the extremes of the faith movement haven't helped us because what they were saying is like it's almost a denial. You know, so if I've yes. got a cancer diagnosis, you go, I haven't got cancer, I haven't got cancer, it's under the blood, it's under the blood. Well, that's called lying. That's not called faith. Yeah. Faith is not go faith is not calling those things that are as though they are not. That's called lying. Faith is calling those things that are not as though they are. So I didn't have my healing manifest at that point, but I walked in faith. And and again, I wasn't the one to judge how I was going to be healed. I didn't know which of the three it was going to take. But in, in all of it, Jesus, you know, I, ultimately I knew that I would be in his hands and it was going to happen. But then the other side of the church has for too often not had any good expectations of God. It's just like, well, this suffering is God's will. You know, I'm not going to expect, if you don't expect anything good, you're not going to be disappointed. Right. And we minimize God. So what we've got is the hyper faith world trying to turn God into a sugar daddy. And then we've got <laughs> the doubt world trying to turn God into this boring, aloof, despot that's angry with humanity and so no wonder people are walking around disappointed or disillusioned or having the wrong expectation of god but in the middle there there's who god is and he's sovereign and we don't understand everything but man we can believe that he is good psalm 119 he does good 
Romans 8, 28, he will work all things together for good. We can believe that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything we could ask, hope or think. And trials will come yeah. and tribulations will come and disappointment will come. And Jesus says, he didn't say if, he said when, when it comes, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So you go, okay, I am not exempt from the human range of uh, emotions or suffering or of living in a fallen world. But my view of God will determine the lens through which I Come look on. at what happens. And I think that's what faith is. I want to have an eternal perspective which will help me endure the temporal process. Um, but I am going to, if I'm going to go to the other side, I'm going in faith. I'm going to go like Caleb. We are well able to take the land. Yes, there's a lot of giants. Yes, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, there's a lot of fear and doubt and negativity. And we live in a world that's out of control. But I thank God that um, God is still in control and he is sovereign and he is good. And that's the lens through which I want to look at this world. My gosh. You know, Christine, I was on the phone with our mutual friend, Allie Worthington, I don't know, a month ago, something like that. And we were talking all about anxiety and fear and all that. And I remember we were in this moment of conversation and saying, we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. So I think what I hear you saying, and folks, I really trust this is just resonating with you. It's like Proverbs 18, 14 says, a strong spirit of a man can bear up under trial, but who can bear up under a broken spirit? So we've got to go deeper than the soul. We've got to get this thing healed from the inside out, right? Absolutely. It all starts from the inside out. That's why Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. It's an yeah. internal thing, not a behavior modification thing. So if you don't get the inside working right, you're not going to be able to respond externally well. And I think that's why we're seeing so many people collapse under pressure. It's not actually a sign of um, their external life. That, that's just a reflection of what's happening internally. Yes, that's so good. Oh my gosh. Christine, listen, I know we are short on time. We're winding down. You've got another interview to take care of. I just want to turn you loose in our very last moments here just talk to the people whose marriages are on the edge of collapse, whose, whose kids are astray, who are facing incurable diseases, who are on the edge of financial ruin. The voices of shame say, you're inherently a mistake. You are the reason this, this happened. Just go after it. Would you just encourage people as, as we sign off here? For sure, Chris. You know, um, I want to be tender to people in so many uh, challenging situations because it's real. It's, it, you know, I'm, I've walked there. I, I, you know, when you have been a victim of sexual abuse for 12 years, when yeah. when the abuse first starts, you, you think what they're doing to you is wrong. Uh, but when it continues over a long period of time, you start to think there's something wrong with me. Uh, that's why this is happening. And I certainly know the shame of that. I, I, I have never known a moment, you know, in my past where I didn't know shame, thinking there's something wrong with me. And out of that, I my expectation of God became very minimal because I thought, you know, how could God love somebody like me or I cause all these bad things to happen? It's amazing. The accuser of the brethren, he's called the accuser because he's gainfully employed doing the one thing he does well, which is accusing us oh. and lying about us. And so he will always try to make you think this is your fault. There's something wrong with you. You're broken. Uh, this is some sort of, uh, you know, justice. You're reaping what you've sown and, you know, you've been bad. And so all these bad things are happening. I want you to know that's a lie from the pit of hell. Your God is good. Your God loves you. Your God sees you. We live in a fallen world. Bad things happen to good people. Look at the life of Job. The Bible says he was a righteous man. And look at what happened to him. So, you know, you don't have to go to bed at night thinking, I did something to cause this. We, we live in a fallen world. But I want you to know in the midst of all of this, um, that your God is for you. And all the promises of God, the Bible says, are in Christ Jesus, yes and amen. And the enemy is after your faith and he's after your hope. Uh, if you look around the world today, there is so much hopelessness. And I want us, and I write a whole chapter on this, to be a prisoner of hope. Yeah. That doesn't mean I know necessarily how things are going to work out in the temporal realm, but I do know that I have this eternal hope. So does that mean I can believe God for your marriage to be restored? Yes. Does that mean I can believe God for your body to be healed? Yes. Does that mean I can believe God to make a way where there is no way? Yes. I still believe that God tears down Jericho walls, that God still pushes back river Jordans, that God still heals and delivers and restores and redeems. And I know that, you know, in the midst of it, it doesn't mean that all our circumstances 
circumstances are going to change overnight, but our perspective can change overnight. And instead of being overwhelmed by the circumstances that are happening to us, we can become overwhelmed by the God who is with us in the midst of it. And when you make God bigger than your challenge, bigger than your disappointment, bigger than your obstacle, bigger than your hurdle, when you magnify the Lord in there, you're going to find everything you need to have the grace for today. You're going to find the love you need, the joy you need, the peace you need, the kindness you need, the goodness you need, the hope you need, the faith you need. You're going to have that for today because it rests in Christ and he is with you regardless of what's going on around you. So then your hope doesn't come in your circumstances being transformed. Your hope comes from the God that is with you in those circumstances and then watch God do what you could never do in your own strength. Dear God, it's like an explosion just went off. Folks, Psalm 16, 8. I've set the Lord continually before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. You will not be moved in your circumstance, folks. She is Christine Kane. She's the author of the brand new book, Unexpected. It's available everywhere books are sold right now. You can go to wintoday.tv slash episode 93. Christine, I could talk to you for three hours on this stuff, but I know you got to go. This has been the treat of a lifetime. Thanks for being here. Hey, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Isn't Christine Kane awesome? I mean, look at the passion and the wisdom and the life experience all wrapped up in one. And she just delivered to us here on Win Today. Guys, you can get her brand new book, Unexpected, right now by going to wintoday.tv slash episode 93. That's wintoday.tv slash episode 93. And here's the deal. If you want to unpack this more in your own life and you have questions, call me right now. The phones are open, 248-266-2945. That's 248-266-2945. Relationships, communication, emotional health, your dreams, your fears. We're going to answer those for you. But up next on this week's Mentoring Minute, Dr. John Townsend is here, and I asked him to simply unpack some simple mechanics of setting healthy boundaries in your life so that you get where you want to go. Here's Dr. John Townsend on this week's Mentoring Minute. The first thing for you to set boundaries, we talk about this a lot of, about a lot of this in the book, is you've got to have pro-boundary people in your life. Yeah. You've got to have a team of, I, I believe in a, I'm writing a book now about life teams. I'm bringing, I believe in a team of somewhere between three and ten people that you sit down with and you say, look, I sort of suck at saying no and i yeah. you know, burning out sometimes. I don't get things done. And can I kind of have a relationship with you where it's cool to say no to you and you can say no to me and say I can't be with you right now, I can't answer the phone, uh, can't go out, can't go to you know dinner with you or whatever because I'm busy and disagree with you and and you need a, a bunch of people that will go, oh my gosh, that's great, I need that too. And we're still friends. We can we can front each other. We can say, I got a problem with you. Or we can say, no, I'm not available. And the other person goes, oh, that's fine. We'll talk later. Mm-hmm. You got to have those around so that your, your brain doesn't go into a relational vacuum when you go to that other person who would have an attitude and say, oh, well, I guess you don't care. Oh, well, I guess you're not on my team. You got to be able to have those other people in your head that you can go, wait a minute, other people like me when I say, right. this person's a an idiot and you got to have that relational basis inside folks let me tell you when i have not set healthy boundaries in my own life not only do i resent the people in my life but i end up resenting myself for the choices i made just to make other people happy and because i didn't respect myself it's no way to live and then the second part of this is that too often we shy away from conflict in relationships listen conflict is actually healthy when it's done well It's when things get complicated that we get messy. But anyway, guys, thanks again for joining my conversation today with Christine Kane. As mentioned, you can get her brand new book, Unexpected, right now by going to wintoday.tv slash episode 93. That's wintoday.tv slash episode 93. So many of you are new to the show here, and I'm so grateful. Listen, the audience is growing And I couldn't be more grateful because I love helping people just like you design your roadmap to wholeness from the inside out in any area of your life. So do me a favor right now. Go to iTunes or the podcast app on your phone and write a review of Win Today. It would really mean a lot to me. And guys, as I've been talking about, the phone lines are open right now. I want to answer your questions about relationships and communication, getting unstuck, how to put a plan together for your dreams, and so much more. Listen, if you have a question, 
I bet that someone else has the same question. And if someone else brings a question to the table, you might be wondering the same thing. So I say, let's jump in this journey together, add value to one another, and become the best we're capable of becoming. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. Until next week, visit me over at wintoday.tv for blog posts and archive podcasts, all aimed at helping you design your roadmap to wholeness from the inside out. Call me, 248-266-2945.